Let's put our rings on the piston. This thing has a uh, little coil spring, has a wire that runs down the middle of it. We want to go ahead and put that on first. Open it up a little bit. Try not to disengage the wire from that spring portion of your uh, oil ring. And then now I'm compressing it all the way in to the end's butt. All right, go ahead and get your uh, large oil ring. I can usually spread them open a little bit with my thumbs or my fingers and then slip it down. Just try not to over pry on them. You don't want to break a ring. This is kind of one of those things you'll get a feel for over a given period of time. And how you how you learn to get the feel for it is because you'll break a ring. I would just hate to break one of these just due to the fact that uh, I don't know for sure about a replacement for these as of yet. Okay. What I'm doing is now that I've got it on, I'm just double checking and compressing it to make sure it's seated all the way to make sure I can get pretty much a zero ring gap in there, and I can, so I know that I've got that ring on correctly. I can still rotate it into position. Next ring, second ring down. If you look on the ring, it has a N and an H on here. Uh, anytime you have a ring that has uh, writing on it, that ring goes up toward the top. The, I'm sorry, the riding goes to the top. Not necessarily the top ring, but the orientation of that ring is with that marking being up. Sometimes the marking's a dent, sometimes it's a letter, sometimes it's multiple letters, but it always means the same thing. Orient that ring with that side facing up. The second ring, which is what I'm putting on now, the second one from the top of the middle ring. It is uh, it's a square edged ring. It doesn't have a rounded surface on it. And then the uh, top ring, I looked at it real close. I didn't find any markings on it. It is sort of a rounded off ring. So it's uh, really not gonna matter which way it goes on. Okay, got them all on there. So here in a second, when I get ready to drop it into my uh, cylinder, I'll get ready to go ahead and orient, orient the rings. Now it's time to work this piston down into the case. Um, take a little bit of our oil. I'm gonna make sure that I've got some on the rod. That's one thing that Now, I personally like to rub a little bit of oil inside your cylinder. I don't like a ton of oil, but I do like a little bit. And uh, since we're uh, applying this from the top down, uh, I will uh, take and just rub. Like I said, I'm not caking this thing down. I'm just putting a little light layer on everything so city to get it going. Now, there's several ways to put these rings into a cylinder. I have this ring compressor tool, laying it across the piston. I've got my rings correctly oriented to where I want them. And you can take this tool and use it to compress those rings against that piston. And then you can tighten, tap it onto your cylinder. So you just wanna make sure as you're tightening it down, you get everything straight and that you don't have any rings hung. Okay, everything's looking pretty good. Just make sure that you have your rings oriented the way you want them before you install them. And you should be able to pretty much get those rings all the way against that piston and then you'll be able to tap it in pretty easy. Yeah, let me see them. 
got one that one last gap there and I'm seeing everything closing up there we go all right looks like all my gaps are closed so you put your uh, piston in doesn't have to be perfectly oriented okay just take a little hammer just lightly and this is a soft ended hammer and I'm just lightly tapping that piston right down into the cylinder. Just don't want to get too carried away, just nice and easy. Putting my hand inside so it doesn't drop all the way out the bottom. It shouldn't, there we go. Now we can go ahead and kind of rotate that piston into position. And by hand, I like to move it up and down a couple of times just to make sure that it's moving free. Don't pull it too far, or push it out the end, and then you gotta start over. All right, it's feeling pretty good. So now we have our rod inside there. Push your hand over the top, push your piston back up, almost to the top. You don't want it going, uh, make, just make sure you don't uh, pop it out. What that does, that'll give us plenty of room to install that crank, which is next. We have the piston in our case, Get ready to install the crank. Remember earlier I was telling you about the, uh, that didn't have any grease in it. And that seal. Take just a little bit of grease. Lube the inside of that seal surface. You don't have to completely pack it. Uh, a lot of people think you do, but you really don't. You just need to make sure there's, that there's a little bit of residual in there and that you, uh, Make sure there's some inside of there's a there's kind of a uh, void area in there. You want to make sure there's some in there. I try to also remove the grease out from the outside of the seal. That helps prevent a little bit of dirt right from the get go from starting or from uh, sticking to it. Probably the most important part of this process in styling the crank, making sure you don't hit the rod, and then as you push it through. Uh, make sure that you're putting the correct end of the crankshaft to the outside. And what I have here is a little bit of uh, assembly lube, Molly assembly lube. I'm going to put a little bit of that on the uh, surface of the crank where the rod will be uh, running. And what that stuff does is it's just a, it's a real low heat grease. So you have a little bit of grease in there to get that that initial rotation taking place. After it starts getting hot, that stuff will wash right out. Just easily putting it in. Dodge your crank shit or your uh, rod. You can just kind of move it around a little bit to get it out of the way. I'm just trying to be real careful, and not hit the hit the rod or torque that rod and, and sometimes that rod's got to get straight with the piston so now I'm just kind of rotating it around a little bit to get a little better orientation there we go I feel like I have it seated all the way in so now I'm gonna flip the uh, case up on its top so I can see to uh, reattach the rod I have some pictures earlier to see how I oriented my tools to tighten this rod. Taking my assembly lube, again putting a little bit of that inside the surface of the cap. Smear it around in there a little bit. I don't put it on the bolt on part of the surfaces. Make sure you have it, which this should only be able to go in one direction as long as you have the rod in correctly. And then start your rod bolts. Okay, I went ahead and <clears throat> went ahead and got the bolts started in the uh, on the rod. Got them up just lightly, touching both sides using a ratchet where I could easily get in there. I'm gonna go ahead and torque these things down. Um,
I'm torquing down the uh, cam cap now. I started off by going five pounds on each cam cap on each side, then 10 pounds. And then now I'm going to 15, doing that progression. That's 15 foot pounds is what I did on those. And it felt pretty, it's a 12.9 uh, bolt holding that cam cap. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty little screw. I just want to make sure I don't overstretch them or break them. Feels good when I rotate it. Matter of fact, I have no idea. I, there must have been more grit inside that piston than I really ori originally, between that and the dry seal and so forth, this thing spins way easier than it did whenever I disassembled it. We have that together now. Pistons, top dead center. I've made sure that I pushed the lifters all the way up into the cylinder uh, uh, or up into the block. Now I'm getting ready to go ahead and install the uh, camshaft, put just a little bit of oil on everything, making sure it's well lubricated. When you put this in, be careful and do not hit the dipper to your uh, on your connecting rod. You don't want to break it off. Uh, there are some uh, gear marks in here, some alignment marks, and I'll show you to make sure that the uh, camshaft is timed with the crankshaft, and I'll be taking a picture of that.